Hey guys, this is Greg Benz with an overview of how you can create completely custom luminosity masks in Lumenzia. Now you may already be familiar that the majority of the buttons in Lumenzia are essentially presets. If I click on something like L2, I get a preset, a preview of a Lights 2 mask in Lumenzia. If I click on L4, I'm getting a Lights 4 preview, etc. with all these different buttons. They're just different presets. They're just different ways of previewing a mask and then when I find the one that I like, I can apply it as a real mask by clicking on something like curves. So now that I've done that, I have exactly what I saw full screen a second ago as a mask on this curve. So there are a lot of options built into the panel and you can work with just those presets, but if you want to tweak them, then you can use some of the, the refinement tools below in, in Lumenzia or you can actually refine the preview itself and that can be really powerful. Let me show you how that works. So let's clear the decks here and try this again. If we start with a lights selection here, so this is lights one, we get this orange preview group. So it's a group with three layers inside of it and each of these layers serves a purpose in terms of creating this preview, but you could also tweak each of these layers which will adjust the preview and then when you apply it, you will get that same preview. So we can adjust this preview. So we can find the closest match with our preset and then tweak it down below here. So let's break down how this works. I'm gonna hide these layers. So underneath we have our original image and to get to a mask, we need to make some assumptions about how to treat color because all masks in Photoshop are black and white images where white reveals and black conceals. So to convert the color, we create this black and white conversion but we don't have to stick with Lumenzia's default conversion. We can use the underlying color information to make different choices about what's selected in the mask and not. So for example, maybe I want to select these blue areas in the bridge. So if I increase the blue selection, now I have more of the blues in the mask. And if I look around the image, there's you know yellows and reds in the sky, there's yellows and greens in the bushes here and there's not a lot of color in this image it's a little bit more monochromatic it's a mostly yellow image but even within this very simple image there's a lot of color variation and all images have some kind of color variation even if you're going to work with a black and white image the original shot in color you can use that to your advantage to create a mask that targets specific areas let's say that we had a blue sky next to yellow buildings they might both be very similar in luminosity. They might be both like a lights four type of a selection, but if they're both getting picked up, then I can't independently adjust them. Whereas with color, now I can make some new choices to separate the buildings from the sky if they're the same luminosity. And that's where this black and white layer can be really powerful. So I showed you how you can just adjust that slider directly. Another way to work with it is to turn on the targeted adjustment tool and now you can interactively click on the image. So if I click and drag, so it's to find that that was reds, or I could try a different area. That's some yellows. Let's see if we get greens here. That's still, yeah, it looks like those are mostly uh, yellows, but if I play with the greens, there's some greens in there. So you can interactively adjust the color in order to target these masks any way you want. So a very powerful way to refine the mask, and you can only do it in the preview. Once you've created your mask, the color information is is really gone uh, unless you start creating new master selections from the original image. So this is a great place to create that separation or sameness if you need to uh, using color. Next up is a curves adjustment in here and the purpose of this second layer in the middle is to map from the black and white image to our tonal selection. So if we think about the, the curves here, the way that this works is the bottom is going to be the output of this black and white layer. It's our underlying tones on the x-axis, so from black to white. And then on the vertical axis, that's gonna be how selected is that tone. So from not selected, which is black in a mask, to fully selected, which is white in a mask, that's how this curve works. So if we look at this basic light selection, it's saying black is not selected, it's at the bottom, and white is all the way at the top, so it's fully selected. That makes sense, that's, that's how a lights mask works. It selects the highlights in the image. A darks mask would be the inverse. The blacks are fully selected and the highlights, the whites, are not selected. Or well, if we look at a midtone, 
Now the blacks aren't selected, the whites aren't selected, but the midtones are selected. And we can take these curves and tweak them. So for example, in this mask, I don't have a very strong selection of the midtones because I base these presets up above on my free masking actions, which are channel based. But with the curves in Lumenzia, we can tweak this. So if we grab this middle point, now the middle grays are fully selected in our mask. They're much more targeted to those middle gray values. And we could decide to have maybe more of the dark midtones and maybe less of the bright midtones. However, we want to adjust this curve. It's infinitely adjustable, very, very powerful. And I'll show you a couple more ways you might use it. So let's go back to kind of this basic curve. Let's say you wanted to protect the highlights. For some reason, I don't want to adjust the brightest areas in this image, but I do want a light selection in general. Well, I can create an anchor point, and now I can bring down those lights. I'm gonna create one more point here to restore the general shape of my curve. So now I have created this light selection without the brightest highlights there. I've protected those highlights. Or another way to think of it, and, and this is analogous to taking something like the light selection and subtracting a lights five. This is basically what we've just done here. Another way to work with it is to work with the interactive, the, uh, the targeted adjustment tool. So if I click on this, let's say I want to select this bridge element. Well, I can click here, drag up, so I know where that bridge is, is here. And now I can grab the highlights in the image and bring them down, or I can just you know, grab the curve point if I want at this point, so I know what I'm working with, but I've, I've created these curve points to help me target this bridge. Maybe I grab these ears here, decide to bring them a little further down, and I can just keep tweaking this curve to get the exact selection that I want of that bridge element. And then lastly, we have the levels adjustment. And this is going to take everything we've done below and refine it. So if we think about this curve, we could do the same thing in a curve, but I have to move each of these curve points in tandem to make some adjustment, it can be a lot quicker and easier to just simply adjust the levels. For example, if we started with this dark midtone and we want to be fully selected, I can just grab the white point and I'm remapping all the tones so that now something has to be pure white. It's gonna be that dark midtone selection. Or maybe I don't want to adjust these darker shadow areas here. Well, I can make sure they're truly excluded by bringing up the black point and starting to knock them out of the mask. I'm creating a more of a high contrast mass that's really targeted to those midtones. So that's the basic function of these adjustment options, these preview options in Lumenzia. The bottom's gonna let us determine which color to work with. Then we're gonna determine you know, which tones we wanna work with, the very specific tones. And then lastly, there's just sort of a global refinement. And these are all the default options to customize mass in Lumenzia, but I wanna show you one further option that you can use. So let's get rid of that. And if you're on Photoshop CC 2014 or later, in the top right of Lumenza, you're gonna have this option to paint on orange previews. If I click on that, it's now checked. And so if I go and create the layer stack, now notice that I have this additional layer. There's one more way that you can tweak these luminosity masks when you're on CC 2014 or later. And now let's say we go back to this lights four here. And in this case, I love the sky, but I don't want these water elements. Well, let's click on this pixel layer. I'm gonna hit B for brush. I already have black paint loaded, and I'm just gonna paint with black paint right over my mask. And so we've gone from here to here, and when I click on curves, it's going to give us that exact mask. So we've refined that mask, and now when we adjust it, notice that the water is not being adjusted, just the sky. So one more time, let's just jump back in there and just take a look at the whole stack. So we have the ability to tweak by color, tweak by specific tone, make sure of a global refinement to everything. And then lastly, if we've enabled the custom option, we can go in with a paintbrush and we can paint with white or black paint to add to the mask or remove from the mask rather than trying to do that in subsequent steps. So that's just a high level overview of how to create custom luminosity masks in Lumenzia. Guys, we're really just scratching the surface here. There's so much more that we can do with it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave your thumbs up below and leave your comments. Let me know what you enjoyed, what else you'd like to see, 
and I will certainly do my best to try and create some additional videos on how to use the customization features in the future.